good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Thursday. Uh, we're going to continue St. Maximus the Confessor, number 85 through 89, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Again, these are ideal. So the aim, when we talk about the ideal, like when Christ says, be perfect as a God is perfect, uh, that is to, again, incite two things in us. One is humility, that we are far from perfect. And second is to kindle the desire to at least strive towards that. Will we reach perfection? That's not up to us. We cannot, by our own nature, grant ourselves perfection. No way. That means we would be God. We're not God. All we can do is say, I'm not perfect, and strive after Christ, and he does the rest. All right, number 85. As a little sparrow whose foot is tied tries to fly, but is pulled to earth by the cord to which it is bound, so does the mind which does not yet possess apatheia, which is, uh, again, dispassion, get pulled down and dragged to earth when it flies to the knowledge of heavenly things. We'll come back to these. Number 86. When the mind is completely freed from the passions, it journeys straight ahead to the contemplation of created things and makes its way to the knowledge of the Holy Trinity. These things are tough, but we'll come back to them. 87. When the mind is pure and takes on, here it says ideas, but it's also uh, mental images. So when the mind is pure and takes on mental images of things, it is moved to a spiritual contemplation. But when it, the mind has become impure by carelessness, it imagines mere mental images of other things, so that receiving human mental images, it turns back to shameful and evil thoughts. We'll come back to that one as well, Lord willing. 88. When in time of prayer, no mental images of the world ever disturb the mind, then know that you are not outside the limits of dispassion. Last one, 89. When the soul begins to feel its own good health, then does it regard as simple and undisturbing the imaginings or the fantasies which take place in dreams. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Very deep sayings here, so we'll try to simplify them if we can. Basically, number 85 if we live in passion, this is going to pollute the mind. Then when we try to contemplate on Holy Scripture and the sayings of the Holy Fathers or the deep understanding of the divine liturgy, anything we try to contemplate in terms of the knowledge of heavenly things, we will be dragged down like a sparrow who's trying to fly upward but is pulled down to earth by a cord. So think about that our passions pollute the mind, and then when the mind is polluted, it's like a cord that's pulling down the mind that's trying to fly up to heavenly things. So what's the surest way to knowledge of God or knowledge of heavenly things? Knowledge of Holy Scripture, knowledge of the Holy Fathers, knowledge of God in general is by trying to purify the passions. That's it. Once the passions are purified, or as the passions continue to be purified, it's like a windshield, right, as you're driving, and you have all these bugs and grime and on the windshield, and you can't see clearly. This is what passion does. This is what sin does. It blinds us to reality. But if we don't necessarily focus so much on acquiring knowledge of heavenly things, but we focus on the purification of the passions and trying to get that grime and those dead bugs and insects off our heart, right, which is the windshield, then knowledge will naturally come. I heard uh, someone say that 
you can preach right, but that doesn't mean that your life is right. But when your life is right, then you'll preach right. I thought that's excellent. So it's the same kind of thing. If we're struggling to have a right life in God, then our knowledge of God will be more right. Number 86. When the mind is completely freed from the passions, it journeys straight ahead to the contemplation of created things and makes its way to the knowledge of the Holy Trinity. So we don't just go from uh, knowledge, we don't go directly to the knowledge of the Holy Trinity. Because the knowledge of the Holy Trinity is immaterial. The knowledge of the Holy Trinity is actually the knowledge of the uncreated light. So we can't just go from, you know, our material world to then closing our eyes or however we want to artificially kind of have knowledge of the Holy Trinity. No, it doesn't work like this. There's a progression. And St. Maximus gives it to us, right? When the mind is completely freed from the passions, so that's the first step. Step one is to try to ask God to purify our passions, to work in synergy with his will, and to do his commandments. And this purifies the passions. Also, the partaking of the sacramental life in, a, in, a, in an attempt to be more worthy every time we, we participate in the sacraments, this also frees us from passion. Then the mind journeys straight ahead to the contemplation of created things. See, it doesn't go straight to the knowledge of the Trinity. This is why we have material things in church. Now we kiss icons. You know, we, we contemplate the fans that accompany the gospel. We contemplate the gospel. Is it frozen for everyone? Yes. Yeah, I can't hear him. It's Yvonne. I don't hear him either. He may be trying to come back in now because he did sign off, so. Oh, you're right, Barbara. That's a good point. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that. My it just it just it just stopped on me. Okay, let's continue. So we contemplate through material things, and then that's where the knowledge of the Trinity is gifted to us. Knowledge of the Trinity is not of our own works, but we can contemplate on the on created things. And then he goes on this in eighty seven, when the mind is pure and takes on mental images of things. It is moved to a spiritual contemplation. So we cannot escape mental images. That's not our aim, is to be free of all mental images, because we, this is the world that we live in. We, we are constantly in the midst of mental images. But if the mind is pure, then it uses these mental images to then contemplate spiritual things. So again, as I said, you can look up at the sky and say, thank you, God, for, for the expanse of your universe. Thank you, God, for, you know, your infinity. You know, you look at the sun and you feel the sun. 
beaming down on you. You can contemplate Christ's love also beaming down on you. You see the moon shining in the in the night. You can contemplate how the light of the church will always shine in the midst of the dark world at St. Gregory of Nyssa. You know, as uh, St. Theophon the Recluse says, all of nature becomes a book of theology. So all created things now can bring about spiritual contemplation when we're trying to pursue purification of the mind. But when the mind is impure, he goes to say, then it, then it takes us back only on a mere human level, and then we go back to shameful and evil thoughts. So this whole section is all about what we, how to acquire knowledge of God. And the simple direction is that knowledge of God comes as a gift. And it comes as a gift when we, in synergy, work with him to purify our, the passions of our heart. Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Knowledge is an existential union which brings about knowledge of God. Knowledge of God is when we are like God, and by living like God, he grants us union with him. This is what knowledge is. And so because we are human, the way to that union is to contemplate spiritually on things that are material, right? Instead of going directly to immaterial knowledge. And this is how our senses are purified, begin to be purified, is the spiritual contemplation of things. You know, as we're, just an example, and then we can open up for dialogue. Just an example is you can be uh, cleaning your countertops, you know, and then you can say, in, you can join it with prayer and say, Lord, Lord, clean, clean, clean the grime from my heart, clean the grime from my soul. Or if you're sweeping, you could say, Lord, sweep away my passions. So therefore, we can use material things uh, to make it and, and and bring it as a prayer and then uh, take the material world and offer it to God. And that's how, that's how our senses are sanctified. Any questions or comments on, on any of this? It's very deep, but it doesn't have to be. It's very simple. And I want to make sure that we come away with a simple understanding of what St. Maximus is saying. Don't be shy. I thought father I heard something. Yvonne. Yes, hi, Yvonne. Hello, Father. Father, those words are such a blessing and comfort for me because I find what I'm doing so much um, is fighting the material things, right. the material images. And it, it will be much easier to just make them a prayer <laughs> than to see them as something I shouldn't be attending to and fighting against them. You know, I, I had that same exact thought or realization when I first read St. Maximus say that the saint uses mental images in its natural way. And so for some reason, there was a notion that the saint is just in uncreated light all the time and has no thoughts of anything, which in prayer, he does say, uh, he does say in 88, when in time of prayer, no mental images of the world ever disturb the mind, that's interesting, uh, then know that you are out, not outside the limits of dispassion. But in terms of our everyday life, you know, our grocery shopping, our bills, our, you know, driving the car, et cetera, the aim is to use natural images, I mean, images in a natural way, the way that they were created to be, rather dispassionately. And this really helped me as well. So I identify with that. I mean, St. Paisios is talking to people, you know, he's helping solve their problems. He has to listen to their stories and there's mental images that come into his mind as they're telling, as, as they are telling him this and myself, you know, being in, in the presence of Holy elders, you know, they'll write down addresses and numbers and, you know, these are all human things. So they're using human things 
naturally, without passion. And this is all part of our nature. And, and there's, I think this part of the spiritual life is missing. You know, when we're preaching this, to become holy is to become human, to become naturally human. Anything yeah. else on that? Anything else on that? You know, I mean, so we, we, we can get carried away by these thoughts in prayer. So that's kind of how we know if, if we are disturbed by these thoughts in prayer and, and it ramps up the passion, right? We find ourselves getting angry in prayer or, you know, our breathing gets more intense or, you know, thoughts of revenge or frustration come up in prayer. Uh, and so we have to really guard prayer and that, that time is something very special so that our passions are not kindled. There are people that St. Ignatius Brentanino would say that there are people that would pray and it would actually incite the passions because they weren't praying correctly. Mm. So, so, so prayer, you know, needs to be carefully guarded. And the saints do say, don't let images come in during prayer or just ignore all the images if they do come. And they certainly will come, but just ignore them. And try not to be carried away by these images, but rather focus on the words of the prayer. We've said this many times, but it's worth repeating. Focus on the words of the prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me with attention. Because this is how delusion comes in, as we say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy, but then our mind wanders to and fro. And then we can carry this more purification of the mind throughout the day, so that when mental images come in, we can, and we find ourselves being carried away by passion in these mental images, then we can just focus on the Jesus prayer, uh, focus on the words of the prayer, uh, and bring us back into uh, keeping our mind more pure. Anything on that? Father, um, it's Yvonne again. I, I'm yes. feeling a little bit self-conscious of talking too much. That's okay. That's all right. But, but I'm thinking in terms of the natural world and that I, I, I have a little bit of a better understanding of how the natural world will work toward our salvation. And if we glorify what we're doing, or if we raise it up, if we raise up what we're doing and, and turn it into prayer, right. then the natural images... The natural raising up the natural images will help us in arriving at purifying the mental images that come into our mind when we're praying. Um, so, if, I'm not if, sure I said that. yeah, if we can, if we can continually ask God to purify us from the passions, then what happens is, is you have just the bare image of that mental image without passion. So oftentimes when a mental image comes in, if we have a passion for that, then our passion will attach to that mental image. But if our, we're being purified of the passion, then it's just the bare image. And when we have the bare image, then we can contemplate things, right? If we, can, if we need to help people, ask people for directions or give people directions, we can uh, help uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> People keep texting me. Uh, then what we can do is, is then work within the natural world without being drawn by passion to that natural world. Uh, so, so, so yeah, yeah, the passion, that's the <laughs> ticket. That's the ticket is to ask God to take away the passions from our heart. Uh, and then that gives us the bare image. And then in prayer, especially, uh, you know, we can focus on the icons, but we don't want to focus on on the on the images per se. We want that to be as immaterial as possible. This is a great topic, uh, too deep for me. All I know is this: the natural world is good. The natural world is made good. 
you know, we, we want, we want, like you said, we, our, our tendency is to say evil, evil, evil. We must shut it out. We must shut it out. But then we shut people out. So the saint mm-hmm. is able to take the good of everything that was created because he's dispassionate, because he's not attached to that thing. So now he's able to see the beauty, or as St. Maximus would say, the logi, he was, he's able to see God in all things, the light in all things. And this is how he is transfigured. This is how his senses are transfigured. So it's not a shutting away of the senses. It's not a, a transcendence that we need to escape the material world. Not at all. That's Eastern mysticism. Orthodoxy is a transfiguration of the material world. And this is done by the purification of the passions. To be continued. Excellent topic. God bless you all. We will continue. We'll have two or three more next week, and then we'll be done. We'll take a break until Great Lent, Lord willing. God bless you all. In the meantime, let us ask God to purify our heart, not out of legalism, but out of a desire to be with him, to be united to him, and when we are united to him, then as St. Paisio says, our love overflows to every created thing. And we love to be with all created things, right? Because we love them. This yeah. is the Christian life. That's the Christian life. To love every single thing purely, which is difficult, but it's joy. Let's pray. Mm-hmm. It is truly me to bless you, Theotokos, every blessed and most pure and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement you gave birth to God the word, to Theotokos we man.